Good evening, everyone. This is Nicole D'Angelo for another episode of Star Citizen AA. This is episode 27. Well, last week when I did a big opinion show, I said there wasn't a lot of news. And all of a sudden, when that show went live, we started getting a flood of news. Lots of things to go over. First thing that I'm going to go over is going to be a rebranding of the channel that this appears on. It's probably still going to say SCAA at the top as I don't want to change that. But I think what is going to be going on is because I do this and Kerbal Space Program and World Th War Thunder and I have quite a number of other things I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be going back under the brand of the old podcast I used to do called The Addicted Gamer. I've asked Radar from our enablers organization to go ahead and make me a logo and a banner so I can get that done. It's not going to change anything here. Star Citizen A is still going to be my primary focus for the Star Citizen community. But I'm going to be branching out and to be doing some videos on some other games that I like to play. So now let's get into the news. First thing that came up is, well, we had Ben Lesnick on last week, and I had kind of a destruction in the video um, interview that I did with him, and then went back out and reshot that video, and in there got to ask him one question, which was about multi-orgs. He said it was going to be coming the following week, and lo and behold, it came out last week. We were graced, <laughs> we were gifted, we were given the multi-organization drop of the organizations on the... RSI website. Now this is one, version 1.5, not version 2.0. So there are a lot of restrictions in what you can do in organizations, especially with uh, multiple ones, but there are going to be some rough edges this time out. 2.0 and 3.0 and for, you know, further down the line, we should see some, um, I guess we'll see some smoothing out of the edges and some new features being added. We still don't have the ability to do divisions, but we do have the ability to join um, a few different orgs at this time. There are still some organizations which are going to be very, um, let's see, they're going to be very weary about there being players in their organization that are in other organizations, so they're going to require that you only be in one. But others, like myself, we don't have any problem with you being in the, our organization and in another and aren't too concerned with which one you make your primary. There's a whole FAQ, check it out, on how multi-orgs work. There was some trauma over what roles you could take and if you're a role, you know, say you're in uh, the officer of one organization, you're not going to be able to be an officer of another. And those, like I said, those are probably things that are going to be worked out over time. I personally like this because there's going to be different play styles and different types of organizations, social orgs, there's going to be hardcore team organizations, and then there's going to be some that are um, dedicated to exploration, some that are dedicated to, um, say, mercenary pirating. And that's one of the things that in my organization we try to take care of right away by having it being um, multiple divisions with division heads that we're going to lead each one of those. And we have um, everything from transportation to pirating, from uh, bounty hunting to, let's just say, exploration. And I, I'm looking forward to seeing how many new members you, we gain. In fact, I think we gained quite a, not quite a bit, a few. We went from, uh, I think it was like 59 just before it dropped to about 85 right now. Still a lot lower than I um, would hope, but I'm still only getting a few hundred to a thousand views per video. It still hasn't caught on, and I think it's because of the sporadic nature in which I um, push out these videos. And then let me guarantee you that's not something that's going to happen in the future. When I do my videos from now on, there will be weekly videos, and that's just the way I'm going to be doing. The addition of this new computer I built has definitely sparked my uh, sparked my interest in getting back to doing this each week. We also saw the ship specs upgraded, and that was another big thing on the RSI website. And it's not something that I'm going to be able to go over right here and see and go through every single ship spec that changed. There's quite a few. Um, there's quite a few additions. All of the ships that were announced during the votes. 
So you have the Carrick and the Herald and the Hull Sea and, you know, you get the drift. There's a ton of ships that are in there. But what I am concerned with, and I'm sure this is just a ship that's going to be in our, um, in the release of the Squadron 42 game, the F-8. F-8 Lightning is in here and it's got some pretty nice specs. It is one of those ships that it's going to be all um, raw firepower. If you fly the ship, think of it as being a gunship, being one of those big heavy hitters. Um, we, we've got the Gladius as being highly maneuverable. We have the Hornet as being the um, jack of all trains, kind of like the Hornet is in the Navy Marine Corps in the United States right now. And then we're going to have the Lightning, which is going to be a dedicated, just go out there and beat you down type spaceship. I guess that's going to be the top end one in Squadron 42. If you relate Squadron 42 to Wing Commander, that would be, I guess, like the Rapier or the uh, um, Raptor. I'm trying to remember which one of those. I think it was the Rapier in the end. If you know better than me, please tell me. I can't believe I can't remember because not only did I play that game forever, but I just did a video not that many months ago about it. So ship specs are updated, go out there, take a look, and like I have said in the past, back in October to be exact, when these got updated, because they're updated does not mean this is final. The, especially for the ships that they just put out there that were the additions that were added during the, uh, during the big votes that we had. Um, these will be hashed out over time, and don't forget, when Alpha goes live, we still have to go in there and you know, do some balancing of the game. So this is the initial specs and, you know, take a look at them and see which one of those ships you really like. I can't wait to get my hands on a Carrick, my Mustang, and uh, I hope we can buy a Lightning at some point, but I, I think I would have to doubt that. It's probably, like I said, just a Squadron 42 spaceship. All right, we had the weekly update on the dogfighting module and in that we had this video that is going over some of the uh, I, I guess it's the ICFS it's a flight control system and how it works and uh, how you can turn on and off the limiters and what type of maneuvers you'll be able to do it's pretty cool I, I really can't wait to get in there this whole Newtonian physics thing um, and I talked about it quite a lot last episode is going to set this game apart from other space sims I've played in the past. Not to say that the Newtonian physics haven't been in others, like Frontier Elite, or uh, I, I think they were even in the Free Space series, right? So, and I didn't get too deep into those games. But I think that this is going to set it apart from some of the things that are out there now. Actually, why am I even saying that? Elite Dangerous is going to have it. I think X-Ray Birth had it. So it's not going to set it apart. It's going to set it apart from the Wing Commander and Star Lancer series. All right. So take a look at the video, read those updates. And one of the key things that came out in that um, update is kind of a gray release date next month, this month, end of month, somewhere over the next 30 days, we're going to start seeing this. And like I said, graduated release. Um, my guess would be it goes to a certain set of beta testers and then rolls from top down to the uh, Imperators, to the Centurions, to the other people that had um, access very early on, and then to the rest of the, the um, people that were in the Alpha. Um, after Alpha gets released, you know, after it gets released to all the Alpha people, I'm sure they'll start letting the people that bought the Alpha, uh, not the Alpha, is it the... Uh, the arena commander passes so it's going to be a gauged release and i could point to another game and give you an idea what i mean by this for any of you that played and i'm going to say the name of the game please don't kill me swotor star wars the old republic um they recently have been doing releases that way where they release to the paying subscribers then to the preferred people that have had accounts for a while and then to the uh, free to play people all right, we're going to talk a little bit about the next generation, the next great starship contest. Um, not the next generation, not Star Trek, but the next great starship contest. I said that I didn't want to talk about it or give my opinion, and I got quite a few uh, private messages and a couple of uh, 
comments in last week's video saying, why not? Why don't you talk to us about your opinion? And it's honestly because I don't want to sound negative. I really like this show, but I feel like because they didn't gauge how long it was going to take for people to actually build their ships, it lost its um, excitement. I really wanted to get behind a team and watch them and see more video of them doing their things. And we got that as a general, um, here's everybody doing that. And then they cut out so many teams that had such great work going. And I really think if they just did a longer show, maybe three, four, five, six months, maybe four months, and follow the teams a little bit more and cut one team each show. So maybe the shows are every two weeks and you fill something else in between. I think that would have built the excitement more, but to see some really, really, really good um, ships knocked out of the contest by them, yeah, we could vote them in, but we've voted back in three dingoes once, are we gonna do it again? And if you vote in three dingoes, how do you leave the four horsemen or sky guard fabrications or other people like that out? I I think that the competition in this this group was too good to get rid of so many at once because, you know, honestly, four horsemen definitely did not need to be eliminated this time. And hopefully you all have uh, voted them back in because they really did have a sweet looking ship inside. And although it was a little too sleek for Chris, it's definitely a ship I would want to fly in the Star Citizen universe. And something that I do think um, owed its look to the Aegis design. The Aegis designs are very sleek and, you know, thin and, you know, not these big um, over, you know, let's just say they're not these big, tough looking ships like the ones that, uh, uh, the uh, anvil makes. All right, so that's my opinion. My opinion is everybody did, well not everybody, most of the people did a great job. I feel that um, this is definitely a first season. I know that they're gonna fix it next season, but too many good um, groups got knocked out at once. It really just takes a wind right out of a sail for a lot of people. You gotta knock one or two out of show, not three, four, five um, in two weeks. So, you know, you got to keep those people who are like standing behind somebody, you got to give them the opportunity to latch onto somebody and like them before you get rid of so many. I, I hope everybody understands what I'm trying to say. All right, so I hope you all go out and have, have gone out there and voted. I think the vote closed down on Sunday night. Um, I personally like the Four Horsemen and Skyguard Fabrications. But that's not saying I didn't like any of the other ones either. I found it very difficult to vote for the people I liked. And in the end, I hit it for four, four Horsemen because I really liked them. All right, so a few months back, a few weeks back, I can't remember how long it was now. They started talking about the subscriber benefits for this coming year. And one of those things was going to be bling for your hanger. Um, so this week, as they were doing a maintenance patch, we got our first little bit of bling, which is a little calendar that sits um, in my deluxe hanger upstairs in between my fish tank and my, uh, my trophy case, um, just to the left of my changing station and just to the right of my, whatever that thing's called, the foot locker. And this calendar, it's pretty cool. It's not something that if I didn't get for free, I'd run out and get, but it adds a certain something to the hanger. And I think it could be done, it could have been done a little bit differently. I would have liked to see a video calendar, but I guess at the current time, if they're just going to drop us a little bit of bling, I guess this works. And um, I'm hoping that this is something that improves over time. I'd like to see some really cool things in my hangar. And if this is the beginning, I hope it gets better from here. Um, there were some other things in the hangar patch and I ran around. I still have the issue where I could fall through the elevator if I don't situate myself just perfectly right. And yeah, I think there was a little bit of frame rate difference, but I think that's because I'm now using my PC with the uh, 760, uh, NVIDIA 760 with four gigs of RAM on it. 
Um, smooth as glass. I'm loving the actual, I mean, look at it. It's sweet. I'm loving the frame rate in here. I'm, I'm loving the way it looks there. Not to say my, uh, my Apple um, iMac wasn't great. It is. That's how you guys get this video. But I understand why I had to buy, build a PC at this point. Okay, we're going pretty quick through here, and uh, patch notes you could read. I'm not going to go through them. I think that would be a big waste of your time. So I'm going to step back a little bit and ask, please, somebody tell me about this F8 Lightning. Where did we hear about it before? Please leave a comment down below, and I will add you into that raffle um, for my extra large hoodie that I will be giving away that doesn't fit me. Um, Contest winner for the Confession of a Star Citizen at a con contest will not be announced in this piece of the show. It will be announced. I'm going to do it live later on today, later tonight, early in the morning, and I'll put it in the um, same video that we're doing right now. I've still got to pull all that um, stuff together and throw all the names into a random generator and find out who won and announce that to them. Can't wait to see who won the 325A. Nice ship. I've got my 315P and I bought the extra mass driver so I could trade out the big tractor beam for a mass driver just in case I want to hit somebody hard or steal their stuff. You know, steal their stuff, hit them hard. Kind of hard to decide which one. I am going to point you to a couple of different um, podcasts and videos over time. One of my favorites in the Star Citizen community, obviously, is going to be Dr. Hawk and uh, maybe StarCast. That's another one because I listen to those guys weekly and I do shows with Dr. Hawk. Love him to death and I think that the last collaboration we did was very successful and very cool. However, I also listen to Sunny's Diner. It's from Massively Online and uh, they are, I mean, they are just amazing and they just did an interview with James Pugh, who is the second in command. No, well, not really. He is the, uh, he, I guess you call him the deputy um, hammer guy. <laughs> Def, deputy hammer of Ben guy. He's working with Ben as an assistant, um, assistant community manager. And the interview with them went really well. And I'm saying this because I've contacted James. And I'm going to have him on the, sh on the show real soon. But first, I've got a really, well, it's not really big, it's big for me. The designer of the Jump Point, the um, hopeful um, creator, or not creator, but assistant to creating the Star Citizen Player Universe Economy, David Letterman, uh, David Letterman, I wish I keep getting that name mixed up. David Ladyman will be on my show tomorrow. and. I'm, I might throw maybe a little excerpt in this if I wait long enough to edit it, but I'm going to release that on its own like it did Ben's last interview. I think they deserve to be on their own, and the news shows deserve to be their own show. That way you don't have to watch the news to get to the interviews. Um, with that said, so I've got David, then I'm going to be doing James, and I've also confirmed with Chelsea and Chelsea's going to come online with me and she's going to do an interview and I think that's going to be more exciting for those of you that have already lit your concierge button um, her Alexis and I forget who the other person is they take care of the subscribers amazingly well when they have questions and you know for those of you that don't subscribe I, I hope you have exactly the same experience that I have had and many of the subscribers have had in dealing, you know, having our questions answered or problems solved or things taken care of by the community um, service group. And uh, Chelsea, I'm very excited to have you on the show. I know that you don't think that you're going to have a lot to say, but we'll find things to talk about. All right, so I don't have that much more to go over. I'm going to do the old iPad toss. One day you can hear that thing shatter, right? And I'm going to talk a little bit about what's next. So I, I want to point everybody to a, well, well, first let's talk about the Addicted Gamer. So I'm going to start that up, right? We talked about that a little bit in the beginning. And as part of that, I'm going to be doing some of the old games I've played. And I think what I'm going to throw in there is, uh, 
I found that they brought back, or not Sony, but you know, some supporters of the community brought back Star Wars Galaxies. And it's the Star Wars Galaxies EMU website. And I saw Scott Manley did a video on that just recently, but before him, these two guys, that's Yivitz and Mr. Bubbles, okay, a Wookiee and a Celestin. <laughs> and uh, they did a hilarious podcast back when Star Wars Galaxies was out. And I would listen to it every time they had it. Um, it was weekly, it was monthly, it was bi-monthly, it was bi-weekly, it was weekly. They come and go, they come and go. And every episode I listened to was hysterical. So they turned me on to this back in February. And I went digging and digging and digging to find my... Because you need the original disc to play the game. And I finally found it. I had the collector's box hidden inside of... Um, it's tough to tell you where it was hidden. Um, but it's kind of like a wooden box that doubles as an end table in my bedroom. And I found it and I'm going to start playing it. I'm going to put that into the feed at some point. I liked, loved Star Wars Galaxies up until the point that everything changed. And the big thing about this is that... It's the game before the change. And, you know, I'll probably go back in there and, you know, find out I don't love it as much anymore with games like, uh, well, with games like Star Citizen and other things out. Um, but I am saying all this, really, because I want you all to go out and listen to Yivitz and Mr. Bubble. And they're amazing. They're funny. They're hilarious. They're, it's one of the better gaming podcasts that I listen to that really doesn't have anything to do with the game. It has to do with the interaction of those two friends that love to play the game. So go out there and listen to them. I'll have the URL to their iTunes over here. And that's a good thing, right? Um, also going to be playing Elite Dangerous, Frontier Elite Dangerous. So I got into the beta and Allison, who is there, um, I guess she's kind of an in-between a Sandy and a Ben for their group. I'm not entirely sure. She said I was going to have press access to the game, but I went ahead and got the premium beta anyway. And I'm going to be interviewing, um, I hope, some of the developers and talk about that game some. If you like Star Citizen and this is a game you like, you're going to also like Elite Dangerous. Sometimes, you know, you play two games and you get away from one to go into the other and back and forth. I obviously am an ADD gamer. I play all of them all around. I mean, I've been playing ESO the last couple of days and let me tell you, it's a fun game, but I don't see me playing it forever. It gets kind of boring after a while, but you get the idea. You might be somebody like me that wants to go from one game to the other and back again. Um, and I think Elite Dangerous is going to be one of those games that you can go to. So I'm going to be talking about that in the future. That's it. I am done. This has been episode 27. And coming up after this will be the contest winner. I'm going to show you a little bit more of that video I showed you of my rig running the um, Star, Star Citizen hangar module. And... Uh, then next week, hopefully, we're going to have quite a few interviews coming your way along with some news. Hopefully, by then, we could start announcing that the first group of people are inside the dogfighting module. And please let me be one of them. I hope. Well, hope I get that X-55 also. Anyway, thank you very much for tuning in and watching another episode of Star Citizen AA. And I'll see you all next week, and you all be safe out there. Bye. Hello everyone, we are here for the announcement of the winner of the Confession of a Star Citizen contest for the months of April, May. And the winner will be getting a 325A package. So here we go, just typing in the names little by little. Just give me a few moments here. Gotta got think and type at the same time of copying. All right, I'm sorry, I'm finding it hard to do two things at once. So we are getting the names in here, crossbone, the daggers, 
of Pythagoras. <laughs> Sorry, Pythagoras. And... Okay, just a few more seconds here. And we'll... Okay, um... Oh! A Carrick! Um, a Carrick has stated that he doesn't want to win, so... Um, a Carrick, I'm gonna give you the offer of, you know, refusal, so you can refuse it. And let's just hit this go button one more time. Alright, if a Carrick passes on it, the winner will be... Cordis. So, a Carrick, if you pass, Cordis will be the winner. That's all, folks. That when the game goes live, this <laughs> Right, so outside of the game way of moving the ships around would be gone anyway, is that true? That's absolutely correct. All right. That's always been the intention. So what first process did you see that inside of the game for us was to move ships from one to the other? The very first Mac, the Mac point, will there be like a galactic market uh, for some ships at some point? Uh, absolutely. I mean, it's going to be drive, as immersive uh, as possible. Be, the I mean, space system files, files and sort of any thing in the program uh, files all had to be on one 128K clock. So that would be 